Hi there guys, we are reviewing the pistols issues uh, with the pistol assembled. This is what you want to do before you start firing your gun. We have a magazine assembly out of the pistol. The pistol is fully assembled. We're going to cut the hammer, make sure the gun is empty, and it is empty. And here's a couple of things you want to check. So the gun is fully assembled, <clears throat> hammer cocked. You want to try to push the hammer forward. You want to make sure you lock up, lock up is tight. You're pushing the hammer forward, make sure it doesn't fall on its own. Fire, recock, everything's good. This is your first check. Your second check, hammer pulled. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna simulate a fire of the, firing of the pistol. We're gonna pull the trigger, hammer falls. You keep the finger on your trigger. Ham, bolt back, full release. We simulate. We just simulated a fire and a re-chambering of a second round. We're still keeping the finger on the trigger. At this point, you want to slowly release the trigger, and you're gonna hear a click. You heard that click, guys? That means your sear is reset, and now you can fire the pistol. You want to do the same thing in uh, with the same pistol, the same thing exactly in a pistol in a different position. What you want to do again? We cut the hammer. Cut the hammer with the trigger off, you cut the hammer, you fire, hold the trigger. Cycle the bolt, you lift the gun up, make sure it's empty of course, don't shoot the ceiling there, but you still finger on the trigger. If your seal spring is weak inside the gun, it will not have enough tension to raise your seal up in the proper position. So a slow release and it's here for a click. Clicks nicely, that means you reset, gun will fire just fine. You want to do the same exact thing with gun pointing back in down. Again, cock the hammer, fire, hold the trigger, bolt cycle, point the gun down, slow release the trigger. Click, all good, fire the gun. This is your trigger reset test. If you test this gun in three different positions, and one of the positions sear did not reset, and the hammer could not fall, that means you have a sear issue, a sear need to be addressed, and most likely you see a spring. <clears throat> Again, guys, we just tested uh, this year's set reset uh, issue uh, with gun in horizontal position, pointing upwards and pointing down. If one of those three positions you see a reset did not function correctly, that means you might have a weak sear spring that needs to be replaced or repaired. You might have a sear that's worn and it needs to be re-welded and re-tempered. Or you might have a trigger that's out of shape also could be uh, worn and bulged, they need to be rewelded and reshaped. All these three components may be attributed to this problem. We fix and repair all three issues. <clears throat> so we are more than welcome to send us the gun, call us and discuss the potential issue. Here is another test we wanted to do before firing the weapon. We wanted to make sure your bolt and your locking block mechanism inside are operating as designed therefore creating a locked breech um, pistol, not a blowback pistol. So here's what you're gonna do. If you hold the pistol as you were firing on by the grip, by the lower frame, and you can cut the hammer to make it easier, magazine out, no bullet inside, make sure it's empty. You wanna pull the bolt back. As you pull the bolt back, you will see that this frame gets exposed you see, when you pull in the bolt in return, locks it, and pulling it forward, opens it. This is what you want to see. You want to see your upper moving down about quarter of an inch as you pull the bolt. <clears throat> what you want to test for is if this is going to happen, even if you don't touch the lower. Your upper and lower are free floating between each other. They are, nothing's locking them, but the bolt stops. A bolt, a bolt locking block. What you want to do is you want to grab the barrel, release the lower, and just by holding the barrel, you want to pull your bolt. Your bolt should not move because you're not engaging the lower, therefore not engaging the bolt lock. It should not move. It, slight movement is okay. A lot of movement creates an issue. Is if you had a disengaged upper, and now. The bolt moves freely, so in case this happens, you're holding it by the upper only, and your bolt opens up without you touching the lower, that means when you fire, the same thing will happen. 
your bolt will move freely, therefore creating a blowback situation and eventually this portion of the gun will get damaged and destroyed and that needs to be addressed immediately. And I believe <clears throat> this would conclude all of our testing to, gun, to make the gun to fire safely. What we always say to our clients is that after restoration of these pistols, after full reviews, and the way we test them is you get the gun back home, we tested this gun probably 10, 15, 20 rounds until it functions to our satisfactory uh, levels. That, but what you're going to find, obviously, is you as a user you have a capability of firing this gun a lot more than we do. What we recommend doing is when the gun is fully re reassembled and you're at the range, you load the gun three or four rounds and shoot the gun. Every time you shoot, you fire one round, you safely point the gun in at the range, grab the upper, pull with the round in it. Just pull it lightly, make sure it doesn't move. Reposition your hands, fire, do it again, pull, and do that first three times, just to make sure that every time you fire, your gun returns back to full battery, your gun is completely locked, and you have no issues or no potential blowbacks. Now, after you do this three or four times, you can resume firing the gun normally, and uh, you don't have to worry about it all that much, but do remember, these guns are old, they need new springs, they need new components, they, new, they need to be cleaned, they need to be taken care of, and they will give you a long service life if you do everything correctly. So please give us a call if you have any kind of problems, you want anything to be addressed, uh, we will be happy to help. And last but not least guys, we wanted to, we just went over all the safety features and all the safety checks at the range when you uh, attempting to fire this gun, uh, so starting to use it, we just went through a locking uh, mechanism test, hammer test, sear test. One thing they wanted to show you is how to operate the loading strip properly. Originally, the loading strip was designed that you, in a way that you can put rounds on it, 10 rounds, you can open your weapon, <clears throat> make sure it's empty, put the stripper clip with rounds on it, and push the rounds in. Not very easy to do, not very user-friendly. It was designed 120 years ago. We don't like to do that with our weapons. <coughs> what we recommend doing is you use an empty stripper clip and put rounds in one at a time. What we do, what you notice right now is the stripper clip is loose and it's loose because it's not being pressed up against the bolt. The guns vary in their dimension and a lot of times the extractor and the bolt will be protruding slightly forward. Therefore, when you insert the stripper clips, you, sometimes you will be fighting the bolt in, or for its position in front of the stripper clip. So a lot of times what you want to do is you want to support the bolt, pull back a little bit, insert the clip, and reapply the bolt on the back of it. What you see here is the stripper clip is loose. That because your magazine follower and your bolt are still in engagement. And if I'm with the stripper clip inserted, I'm going to try and push on the follower it's going to be very hard to do because it's still engaged with the bolt. And that's going to be the same for you when you try to put the first bullet in. You don't want that to happen. It creates a bad example. What you want to do is, again, pin or finger with the stripper clip inserted. You want to pull the bolt back, push on this. Now your follower is free floating with the follower down you want to release the bolt see what just happened the stripper clip received all the pressure of the spring from the bolt and now your bolt is on this actual clip not on the follower and your follower is free to move up and down and that's when you want to start loading the rounds it sounds very complicated in fact it's very easy you just have to disengage the follower and the bolt so once this is done and now this is under pressure from the bolt now you can load your rounds with nothing happening. No bolt will stay back and be supported. After you load a couple of rounds, we always say there is a 10 round capacity magazine. You could load it fully. What will happen if you've got an old gun, we potentially will replace the springs for you. Potentially we tighten up the gun and it's all nice and fine. And it will most likely function just perfectly fine with 10 rounds. But before you test the gun to its full capacity, 
you want to load it five to six rounds, what happens when you have a full magazine, you, your spring tension on the magazine is very uh, severe, and it creates an additional pressure on the bolt as the bolt moving. Therefore, if your gun is not 100%, or you haven't tested it and you're not sure, you will create an additional problem that might be not helping the gun function. So we want to say three, four rounds the first time, five, six rounds the next time, get the gun to run, get the gun to wear in, as if it was brand new, because a lot of times after restorations, after any kind of fixes, materials being added, uh, parts are being reshaped and rehardened, the gun is acting as a brand new weapon that needs to be broken in. Easiest way to break it in is to put five, six rounds, shoot him, put five, six rounds, shoot him, and therefore wear the gun in easy. Uh, after you're done, you go around the end of the gun, your clip is still here, the bolt is still back. What you want to do is you quickly, you grasp empty stripper clip and you move it forward. As you, as you pull it up, rather, you pull it up, your bolt goes forward, therefore loading the round in the barrel. You want to remember to do that while you point it in a safe direction at the range and only at the range where you have a target or a backstop of a sword <clears throat> so because now your gun is loaded and the safety is not on and you want to make sure you know you don't accidentally fire if you have an old gun we haven't reviewed the gun sometimes if your hammer is not fully engaged a lot of these guns would they all do as this happens the hammer will follow and the shot will follow as well you want to make sure your hammer, again, as we previously reviewed, is in a good position and always could be engaged by the trigger. What you <clears throat> want to do is learn to use the safety on this weapon. A lot of these designs were changed throughout the time, so some safeties will only engage with the hammer cocked. So, like, I'm pushing the safety up, trying to have it moving, and it's not moving, it doesn't want to get moved. On a lot of these weapons, it is an issue. The way to engage the safety, unfortunately, is you have to release some tension from the hammer, and now the safety moves up nice and easy. You want to do this with the gun empty, obviously, and this is the test you want to do. You release the hammer. You see how safety just took the pressure of the hammer? So you want to pull the trigger. Nothing happens. Great. But it's not all of it. Sometimes, if your safety is not function properly adjusted, what you will have is, as you pull the trigger, instead of the safety, you sear inside the the gun takes pressure of the hammer and as you release the safety your hammer could fall down and it happens a lot so right now again i'm going to re-engage again i'm going to pull up re-engage the safety and everything's great and hunky dory and sometimes you pull the trigger a couple of times you see it pops up and this is this could happen you don't want that because as you see as you do that you will gun will fire so you want to make sure empty that your safety when disengaged after the trigger pull will actually retain the hammer in its position, like it should. I simulated this situation by holding the trigger. You shouldn't really. What you need to do again is safety on, hammer back, trigger, trigger, trigger. Now safety back, problem not there. And what it does is the hammer gently jumps from the safety into the sear, and the sear is in the proper position. And some of these guns, I'm gonna ease off the hammer, some of these guns will Put, put themselves on safe while the hammer is at rest. And when they're properly done, proper safety engagement, your hammer and your firing pin will have a slight gap in between them. You can barely see it, but it's there. If you don't have that gap, that means your hammer is too far in. The tap of the hammer will fire the round potentially. So you want to make sure your safety is properly adjusted for that not to happen. And again, we're going to ease it off. What you're going to see is the hammer is going to put itself back on the position on the firing pin now there is no gap so and that's what is what happens exactly it should push it back a little bit just so ever so slightly creating that gap and if your safety doesn't do it then you have a potential problem that needs to be addressed i think this would conclude our testing and safety precautions of, of, of reviewing the pistol before fire if you come across any problems that were not discussed in this video please give us a call. Uh, we are here to help. We have been dealing with these guns and restoring them and repairing them for over 25 years. Uh, I don't claim to know everything about this pistol, but we know a lot and can fix most of your issues. Thank you very much, guys, and uh, make your comments, uh, make your suggestions. We are open to ideas. Thank you very much. Bye. 
one more issue we wanted to address when the gun is fully assembled and we're preparing for testing and preparing for checking the safety issues what you wanted to do is you wanted to double check if your extractor is a nice and tight engagement so what you want to do is try to pry the extractor up and if your extractor doesn't move with a small finger praying that's perfect that's you that means the extractor has tension and when round will be in the chamber and the extractor pops over the uh, ex uh, round it will hold it and upon firing will extract it if you have a weakened extractor that moves a little wobbles a little bit a lot of times it's due to the wear of these years or due to the wear of the extractor itself if you fire the gun and the extraction does not happen and the round stays in the chamber what happens a lot is you're going to notice Let's say you fired the gun safely at the range. Right now we have it empty, but I'm going to try to simulate the problem. You end up with the round in the chamber. Because of the magazine is not removable, what's going to happen is the gun is going to fire. The gun is going to retract the bolt. The, the round is staying in the chamber, empty, hopefully. You have additional rounds in the magazine. What will happen is the bolt will attempt to feed the second round in, and now you have a jam. Now you have the round in the chamber, second round is prayed up against the uh, empty round by the bolt and your gun is completely locked up, you can't do nothing. Because you can't forward it because you already have a round, you have to extract that round. The easiest way to do that, and attempt to do that at least, you pull the bolt back, the round that's being pushed out of the magazine, you gotta push it back in by holding the bolt, or it's a safer way is you put an empty stripper clip, rest the bolt on it, so now you can push the round back in, what you need to do, you have, you have the round here. You can either take a screwdriver and try to carefully remove the round, or what you can do, hold the bolt. Because as soon as you remove the clip, your bolt will attempt to forward. You hold the bolt, you take your finger, lower the round in, and carefully slide over the rounds in the magazine and attempt to close the gun completely with the empty case in it, pointing in a safe direction briskly open the gun up and hopefully your case will follow the bolt extract and then your second round will chamber be safe point it in the safe direction because if you have rounds in it it will chamber the round and the gun will be live and ready to fire but if it doesn't work for you guys if you have that situation and your bullet is stuck and you this bullet is stuck and a new bullet is jammed the safest way to do it is you take the loading clip you put it in your bolt is resting up on it Hopefully it's resting and it's you want to maybe pull the bolt, bolt a, little, a little bit, allow the clip to insert, rest it on the clip, make sure the clip has tension. At this point, you have rounds in the magazine, you have a stock round, you will gently flip it over, point it in the safe direction, push the button, release the butt plate, and as you release it, all your gun, all your rounds and the spring and the follower, everything's gonna try to pop out. And that's great because now you have an empty magazine. You wanna carefully flip it over. Your round is still stuck in the chamber. Your first round out of the magazine is most likely is right up against the remaining uh, round. So now you have two rounds, but you have nothing in the magazine. The magazine is empty and open. You pull the bolt back and hopefully your remaining round will just fall down. So now you've cleared the gun. Hopefully everything's cleared and empty. You can take your uh, screwdriver and safely remove an empty case and uh, and you have, if you have that issue, and it does happen on the older weapons sometimes, the extractor doesn't perfectly function because it's worn, it's all needs to be replaced. We are currently working on producing the extractors. Right now we have extractors that we purchase on the market and we adjust them and uh, retemper them and make them fit the particular weapon because they are all different. Uh, you do want to address that problem. And simply buying the extractor on the market doesn't always do the trick because a lot of times they need to be tempered, bent in the proper way, tempered in the proper way, adjusted and fitted to the weapon before they start functioning correctly. So one issue out of the box around is okay. If you have five, five rounds that got stuck and you needed to extract them manually, you know you have a problem. So call us again, address, let us address the issue so the gun will be safe for you to fire. Thank you, bye.